In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, as we see how the nativity of your Son according to the flesh draws near, we pray that to us, your unworthy servants, mercy may flow from your word, who chose to become flesh of the Virgin Mary and establish among us his dwelling, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Malachi. The Lord God says this, Look, I'm going to send my messenger to prepare a way before me, and the Lord you are seeking will suddenly enter his temple. And the angel of the covenant whom you are longing for? Yes, he is coming, says the Lord of hosts. Who will be able to resist the day of his coming? Who will remain standing when he appears? For he is like the refiner's fire and the fuller's alkali. He will take his seat as refiner and purifier. He will purify the sons of Levi and refine them like gold and silver. And then they will make the offering to the Lord as it should be made. The offering of Judah and Jerusalem will then be welcomed by the Lord as in former days, as in the years of old. Know that I am going to send you Elijah the prophet before my day comes, that great and terrible day. He shall turn the hearts of fathers towards their children and the hearts of children towards their fathers, lest I come and strike the land with a curse. The Word of the Lord Stand erect, hold your heads high, because your liberation is near at hand. Lord, make me know your ways. Lord, teach me your paths. Make me walk in your truth and teach me, for you are God my Saviour. Stand erect, hold your heads high, because your liberation is near at hand. The Lord is good and upright. He shows the path to those who stray. He guides the humble in the right path. He teaches his way to the poor. Stand erect, hold your heads high, because your liberation is near at hand. His ways are faithfulness and love for those who keep His covenant and law. The Lord's friendship is for those who revere Him. To them He reveals His covenant. Stand erect, hold your heads high, because your liberation is near at hand. Alleluia, Alleluia! King of the peoples and cornerstone of the church, come and save man whom you made from the dust of the earth. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. This proclamation taken from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. The time came for Elizabeth to have her child, and she gave birth to a son. And when her neighbors and relations heard that the Lord had shown her so great a kindness, they shared her joy. Now on the eighth day, they came to circumcise the child. They were going to call him Zechariah after his father. But his mother spoke up. No, she said. He is to be called John. They said to her, But no one in your family has that name, and made signs to his father to find out what he wanted him called. The father asked for a writing tablet and wrote, his name is John. And they were all astonished. At that instant, his power of speech returned and he spoke and praised God. 
all their neighbors were filled with awe, and the whole affair was talked about throughout the hill country of Judea. All those who heard of it treasured it in their hearts. What will this child turn out to be? They wondered. And indeed, the hand of the Lord was with him. The good news, the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. What is to give light must endure burning. I feel this quote from Viktor Frankl challenges me, as does the prophet Malachi in our first reading, to consider if I have indeed engaged with Advent, whether I had used this sacred season to purify, cleanse my heart, to burn, to admit the light of Christ to the world and prepare for the great feast of the light of the world. We're just two days before we celebrate the Midnight Mass, and that is the great solemnity of Christmas. The imagery of the light coming in darkness, burning, burning in passion for love for us, admitting the light, is already there in the way we celebrate and announce the solemnity of Christmas. The Gospel today brings us to the story of John the Baptist emitting that light, pointing to the light of Christ. It brings us to the story of Elizabeth and Zechariah and John. But if we look beyond the narrative, we realize that just as our opening prayer, it is a story of the mercy of God, the mercy that engenders Elizabeth's life, Zechariah's life, and John announces that mercy of God. This is what we are rejoicing. This is what they are astonished at. The mercy of God lifting Elizabeth's sorrow, being barren and drawing her to kin and clan. It's about what God in His mercy is doing, not just for Elizabeth, but for all on the fringes and margins in society that Mary sings about when she meets Elizabeth in her sixth month, the Magnificat. If only I would also have that burning to admit the light, that burning of the mercy of God. If Advent indeed has invited me to make room for Jesus, to make room for him in my life, then it would be that it would have found me being a little bit more merciful, a little bit more compassionate to those who have not been home, who have experienced great distress and hardship during the year, and especially in this pandemic, it would have seen me feeling for those confined to the dormitory or those who have lost their job or struggling to learn and engage in a new one. On the eighth day, the Gospel tells us that when the child is dedicated to God, and named, his life truly began. His name was his mission. John, the grace and mercy of God. Oddly enough, it is Elizabeth who names him, not Zechariah at first. Why? Because she has in that first lines of the gospel already experienced the mercy and kindness of God, the graciousness of God. The child will embody this experience of hers and he will announce the source of that mercy. This is perhaps the best invitation for me to realize that in preparing to celebrate the great solemnity of Christmas, I need to be a person 
who is also gracious, also one of kindliness, so that my Christmas will be that of all astonishment of how God has been merciful to me, how God has been gracious to me, how God has so loved me that he became small so that I would be able to take him in. How will I express this? Like Pope Francis, I identify myself as a sinner. Maybe this Christmas, I can. This one who has experienced the forgiveness of God, prepare me a gift for someone as an expression of kindness and mercy. Maybe my conversations will be one that is a lot more gracious. His name is John. Maybe I can commit myself to kinship and clan by not neglecting one who feels abandoned, ostracized, by bringing in as Elizabeth was brought in by the kindness and mercy of God. His name is John. May I, this Christmas, burn so that the light of Christ might shine and the graciousness and mercy of God be known by those who sit at table and those whom I share table with this Christmas. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Let us pray. Grant your peace, O Lord, to those you have nourished with these heavenly gifts, that we may be ready with lighted lamps to meet your dearly beloved Son at his coming, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless us, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go. Prepare to announce the light of the world.